Before beginning this presentation, several design features of the PMT Halo deserve special attention. First, nylon ball joints are used to connect the halo rods to the ring and vest. These joints are designed to allow maximum adjustability and facilitate accurate and rapid cervical spine positioning. Secondly, the PMT Halo is constructed of lightweight graphite and titanium, rendering the device CT and MRI conditional. Recent studies have documented that this combination produces the clearest MRI images. Stainless steel pins or attachments should not be used with the PMT Halo. For optimal halo application, ample room and assistance are crucial. Our standard prep table is shown here. Please see instruction manual for a detailed list of instruments. Prior to positioning the patient, ring and vest size are approximated from patient measurements. The ring size is estimated from the head circumference measured from points 1 cm above the eyebrows and the top of the ear. PMT provides ring templates for ease of measuring. The vest size is estimated from the circumference of the patient's thorax at the level of the xiphoid process. The measurements provide a rough estimate and proper sizing is confirmed at the time of application. Standard precautions regarding cervical spine stability are taken while positioning a patient for halo application. The patient should remain in the patient bed with the chuck placed underneath. First, lower or remove the headboard. With the physician stabilizing the head and neck, a nurse stands on either side of the patient. Gently lift the patient using the chuck about six inches and move the patient to the head of the bed. Next, stabilizing the head and the shoulders and keeping the patient's hips firmly planted, raise the patient's torso slightly. Place the positioning board or skate assembly underneath the patient. Make sure that the spoon is locked in place. Then gently lower the patient onto the positioning board with the head resting in the spoon. The patient's head will be just above the head of the bed. Several methods of positioning the ring during its fixation to the skull are available to the physician. PMT provides an outrigger which connects to the head holder. The skate assembly allows motion in all three planes and provides the most rigid positioning of the ring. Optimal ring positioning is symmetrically around the skull below its greatest diameter. The ring should be free of the top of the ear. Additionally, ring position dictates pin position. Anterior pins must be placed in the anterior safe zone, which is slightly superior to the lateral half of the eyebrow. Care must be taken to avoid the supraorbital nerve, supratrochlear nerve, temporal artery, and temporalis muscle. Pins through the temporalis muscle are anchored in relatively thin bone and will cause pain during mastication. After shaving the hair and with the ring held in proper position, swab the head with betadine. Use an exam light to locate the pin sites. Pin sites should be at a diagonal, as close to a 180 degree angle as possible. Posteriorly, the pins are placed in the relatively thick occipital bones. The skin beneath the appropriate holes is anesthetized with 1% lidocaine and epinephrine in a sterile fashion. For stability during pin insertion, the ring may be held manually or plastic-capped positioning pins may be inserted through vacant holes in the ring. The pins are inserted using two Torx screwdrivers. The wrenches are initially set to 2 inches per pound, and diagonally opposite pins are tightened simultaneously. When the wrenches click, they are increased to 4 inches per pound, and the other diagonally opposite pins are tightened. When the wrenches click again, they are increased to 6 inches per pound, and process is repeated until all pins are adjusted to either 6 or 8 inches per pound in healthy adult populations. Torque pressure may need to be lessened for elderly and pediatric patient populations. Higher pressure may be used for a larger patient. Care should be taken to hold the eyelids closed while tightening the anterior pins. Failure to do so may result in a pulling sensation on the eyelids. Finally, locking nuts are placed over the pins and tightened securely to the ring. Remove the outrigger. To place the posterior shell of the vest, unsnap the patient's gown and pull it down to the waist. Next, keep the patient's hips planted, then raise the patient's torso about 6 inches off the bed. 
Remove the positioning board and slide the posterior shell in place, then gently lower the patient. Correct orientation is ensured by keeping the lateral holes at the base of the head block. When properly attached, the head block should form a T above the patient's head. The anterior portion of the vest is connected at the sides and over the shoulders to the posterior shell, engaging the interlocking tabs. The vest should be pulled snugly around the waist. The shoulder strap should be adjusted to allow one hand to fit between the vest and the patient's shoulder. The anterior shell is different than the posterior shell in that it possesses a breakaway seam or cardiac crease for CPR at the xiphoid line. All of the nylon balls on the vest and head holders are loosened. The anterior rods are slid caudad from the head blocks through the vest. Rods should not extend further than the vest anteriorly. With all the nylon balls loose, the degree of flexion and extension, rotation and translation of cervical spine may be adjusted. Following adjusting, dictated by the nature of the patient's injury, all the superstructure attachment points are tightened with the torque wrenches. For this, the larger bit is placed in the wrench and is set to 30 inches per pound. Research has shown that this torque setting yields the maximum degree of patient safety. Once the procedure is complete, carefully remove the positioning board. X-rays should always be obtained at the end of halo application to confirm the position of the cervical spine. The patients should always be assured that the initial pain and pressure will gradually resolve over the first 24 to 48 hours. Within 48 hours of post-halo application, both skull pins and superstructure attachment points should be retorqued to their initial setting to help prevent complications. Remember to loosen the locking nut prior to retorquing the pins. No other torquing of halo pins is required. Note, many physicians prefer to keep the collar on during the procedure to help stabilize the head and neck during application. Note, if the patient suffers a skull fracture or laceration, place pins on either side of the injury. Routine pin care consists of gentle cleansing of the pin site with hydrogen peroxide, cut to half strength with saline or distilled water daily. Use a clean swab at each pin site to prevent infection. Benzocaine ointments are not recommended. Use a fresh hydrogen peroxide solution each day. The most common complications are pin loosening, pin infection, and skin breakdown. Never place a pillow, towel, or any other device between the rods of the halo and the neck. Proper sleeping position is shown here. Patients with loose pins will often present with complaints of increased pain and sensation of movement at the pin sites. Treatment consists of retorquing of the offending pin and all the superstructure nylon balls to their original settings. For infected pins, retorquing is combined with a five-day course of PO antibiotics and results in a 90% pin salvage rate. Uncontrolled cellulitis, despite antibiotics and retorquing, usually clears when the pin site is changed. But cases of subdural abscess have been reported, so these patients should remain in the hospital for observation. If a pin fails to gain purchase during insertion or retorquing, it should be switched to an alternate site. If this occurs, the patient should be observed for an additional 24 to 48 hours in the hospital. The lamb's wool liners provided with the PMT halo orthosis offer excellent protection against skin breakdown and are easily exchangeable when soiled. Insensate and particularly thin patients benefit from the additional padding around the anterior and posterior bony prominences. Patients often experience muscle wasting while in a halo and may require tightening or even exchange of their vest to a smaller size. Moisture wicking cool max and acrylic liners are also available, as some patients may not tolerate lamb's wool. In summary, proper application of the PMT halo vest orthosis will provide rigid immobilization of the cervical spine while allowing maximum patient comfort and minimizing complications. If you have any further questions regarding the PMT Halo, you are referred to the PMT Instruction Manual or to your local PMT representative.